Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how to make the second model listed in activity 134 in PLTW IED. And first you need to enter, open a part studio in Onshape. And the next thing we need to do is start a sketch. So uh, we are going to sketch the pentagon that's at the bottom of this object. So I'm going to choose the top plane to draw on. And in that top plane, we are going to create an inscribed polygon. Uh, this is strange terminology because technically the polygon is actually um, circumscribed around the circle, but Onshape is using the term inscribed to represent this, that the circle is inscribed. So I'm going to tap at the origin, and then I'm going to try to get that point to line up underneath the origin on that y-axis right there. So I'm going to get there and let go. Now you'll notice that it starts out as a hexagon. Hexagon's a pretty common uh, polygon to use in uh, 3D modeling, but we don't want a hexagon. So we're gonna take our finger and we're gonna just rotate it left a little bit and you'll notice it turns into a pentagon. If I go a little further, it'll change shapes that way. If I go the other direction, it's gonna add more sides. So I wanna go till it's a pentagon. Now let's say you uh, miss that, you screw that up, and you make it a hexagon instead. All you have to do is turn off the tool, double tap right there where it says 5x for me, um, and change it to a 5, and then that'll make it a 5-sided polygon, which we call, of course, a pentagon. Now, based on the size of the um, model and the picture that they give us in the Project Lead the Way Activity 134, it looks like we're at approximately, um, that this circle would be approximately 1.5 inches in diameter. So I'm going to go ahead and make that 1.5, and we have our pentagon, and then I am done with my first sketch. So now I want to extrude that pentagon up, and when I do this extrusion, uh, first it's gonna do the typical, like, thinks I wanna do one inch. Uh, it's probably gonna be more like 0.2 inches. And furthermore, it's not uh, perfectly straight up, it's actually, um, at a 45 degree angle. They tell us this in the instructions. So um, uh, they call that, uh, they don't call it a draft, they call it something else, but in Onshape it's called a draft. And when I select draft, I can give an angle of the draft, 45 degrees. And um, if I put that angle in, you'll notice that it's drafting outward as it goes up. That, that's the opposite of what I want to do. So I'm gonna select this right here, and now it is drafting inward, which is what I wanted it to do. So now that it's done that, um, I have everything I need. I'm gonna hit check mark, and that extrusion is done. Now, the cool thing about Onshape is when I go to do the next piece, um, it's, it's basically this pentagon right here extruded upward some more. Um, I do not need to make a separate sketch. I actually can go straight to extrude again, and I can tap on that top pentagon, and it knows I want to select that surface, which is awesome. So uh, that's going up. Now in the activity 134, they talk about plastic molding. So injection molding and considerations you have to make. And one of those considerations is you kind of want your part to taper uh, as it continues onward. So in this case, we are making a part go up and we want it to taper as it goes up just ever so slightly so that it's easier to pull out of the mold. Well, if that's the case, then we need to make sure to do a draft again. Three degrees is totally appropriate, but once again, if I leave it like this, it's actually drafting outward. I want it to draft inward, so I'm gonna do opposite direction and I can tell the difference. All right, see, so yeah, there's outward, there's inward. So I know that's the right one, I'm gonna hit check mark, and now um, I have my second layer on there. The next thing I want to do is I want to convert this pentagon into eventually a circle. And in order to do that, I need to make a transitional space. So I am going to first create, using the 3D features, oops, that is not what I wanted to do. Creating, using the 3D features, I am going to choose a plane. I'm gonna make a plane above this pentagon. So I gotta tap on the pentagon. And right now it's putting it a whole inch away. I do not want that thing to be an inch away. Maybe another 0.2 inches. All right, just a little bit so I have some room to transition from a pentagon to a circle. I'll hit check mark to show that that's where the plane, or, or that I've put the plane where I want it to go. And now 
I have a whole bunch of planes here, all right? And since I'm trying to sketch on that tiny airplane, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke the eyeballs over here of the right front and top plane, and that gets rid of them. And so now they're invisible and it's a lot easier for me to manage my space. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, make a circle on this sketch plane that we made. So I'm gonna uh, tap on sketch, I'm gonna tap on that plane. I'm going to do my two finger tap and view normal to the sketch plane. And now I can see right down the center of this thing, which is what I want and I need to make a circle. I'm gonna choose a center point circle. I want my first point to be the center right there at the origin. And then my second point, I want to come out here. Now, you'll notice as I pass by these pentagons, none of them are highlighting orange and letting me basically lock into them. That's okay though. Um, even though that's what we want to do, we're actually gonna back it off a little bit, just like that. And we're gonna use some um, sketch constraints. What's really cool about Onshape is I don't have to have that pentagon sketched in my new sketch plane. Okay, see how, oops, I need to not do that, turn that off. See how if I turn this, I just have a circle. It's all I have. But what Onshape does, it allows you to use features from other um, surfaces to do what you want them to do. So I'm actually going to tap on the circle and the edge of this inner pentagon, and if I choose the tangent constraint. It'll make it quote unquote tangent to the line that would be there if this was drawn on the plane that I'm using. It's not, and it didn't make my circle actually tangent to that pentagon, it just made it tangent relative to the projection of that pentagon, which is pretty much exactly what I wanted in the first place. So that's awesome. So now I can finish that sketch, I can hit the check mark, and I'm gonna transition from that pentagon top to the circle. That's a 3D feature. It's called a loft. You'll look, if you look at the icon of loft, you can see it kind of looks like a square turning into a circle. Loft is basically a way to, to transition from any one surface shape to another surface shape using kind of like an extrude. All right, it's like a special extrude that connects those two shapes. And I just have to tap on, tap on the pentagon, tap on the circle, and it is done for me. Now, there are some, if I edit that loft, there are some choices you have that you could do a little bit differently. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can kind of see these differences occur. All right, so that's, I'm looking at it from that angle right there. If I choose start pro profile condition and I choose match curvature, you'll notice that it kind of curves out a little bit. All right, it doesn't remain just perfectly uh, straight, it just curves out a little bit. Um, there's also match tangent, which is somewhat the same um, tangent to profile does something more like that, so it kind of sweeps in a little bit instead. And then, of course, normal to profile um, kind of does something as well. And then we have none. All right, so it's just trying to transition based on what it thinks. Now, of all of those choices, technically, a better one would be um, either match curvature or uh, match tangent. All right, if I match curvature, what that does, it just kind of curves it out a little bit and it makes it so that it's uh, not as, as rigid and sharp on that edge. One of those things we have to consider, I'm gonna check mark this by the way, one of those things we have to consider when we're making thing out, things out of you know plastic or we're molding things is we don't want lots of sharp edges. All right, if we have sharp edges, we're gonna have issues. In fact, you might even notice that uh, I'm talking about this, but I have some really sharp edges down here at the bottom. We'll take care of that in a little bit, but that's definitely a consideration we have to make. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to make the top cylindrical part. And so I'm gonna go back to my 3D um, options and choose extrude. Again, that circle right there uh, is a surface we can use. So I'm just gonna tap on that circle and it lets me extrude. This is approximately 0.5 inches. It doesn't really give you dimensions in the activity, but we're gonna call it approximately 0.5 inches. And uh, once again, we're gonna draft this so that it comes out of the mold a little bit easier. So I'm gonna choose draft. I want it to be three degrees, that's fine. I want it to go inward, not outward. And then I can check mark that and I have that shape. Now that looks like a pretty silly shape if you look at it from the side there. Um, you can see how it kind of goes cylindrical in the transition between the pentagon. I'm looking over here. 
uh, between the pentagon and the uh, circle, but you know, it's, it's a good enough shape for now. It's not exactly what it's showing on the, um, the object in the activity, but at least has something uh, transitioning. So now what we're going to do is we are going to make that bottom so that it's not sharp. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude that bottom just a little bit, not Statue of Liberty, that's really tall, just like a 0.05 inch little distance there. And I'm going to draft that as well because I want it to flare outward a little bit. And this is a lot harder to see, so you have to zoom in quite a bit to see the difference. But I can undraft that. See that? That's straight. And then if I draft it, it's going outward just a little bit. That's exactly what I want. I do not want to do opposite direction. That makes it go inward. That's a bad idea. Make it go outward. Hit the check mark. And now I have that little piece. So now that thing that was really sharp earlier is not sharp anymore. It's blunt because it's got that little edge to it that we just added. All right, now comes the fun part. We are going to create some holes in the top. This is one of the fun parts, I should say. Um, so I'm going to start a sketch on that top surface. I'm going to double tap and view normal the sketch plane. And actually, before I did that, I should make sure that my sketch plane is where I wanted it to be. Yes, it is. All right, so now view normal the sketch plane. And I am going to make a circle, and I actually want this to be oriented that way. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to make um, two points. That's all I need to make. I need to make a point at the origin, and I need to make a point somewhere straight above the origin. So this is on the y-axis, technically, straight above the origin. That's where I want it to be. Now, I need those, those to be a certain distance away from each other, so I'm going to go in and dimension that distance from here to there, and that is... Uh, we're going to make it exactly 0.3 inches, and that's good. All right, now, we made two points because that's points are what we need to use in order to create holes. If you remember uh, making holes in activity 132, um, we're going to be using that skill here. We're going to uh, go to 3D features. We're going to choose hole, and we'll do the center hole first. And tap on that center point. We want a simple hole. We do not want it to go through. We want it to be blind and to go, um, it's going to have a diameter of a quarter inch. That's perfect. But we want it to go one inch deep. Hit check. And there we go. So we have a hole going in one inch deep. Now you'll notice after I did that, my other point disappeared. That's unfortunate. I kind of need that point to make the other hole. Um, I'm going to poke the eye on the sketch three, and that'll make it visible, and my point is now visible, which is awesome. So now I can create a hole at that point, and I don't want this to be the same size. In fact, I want it to be about half the size. I don't want it to be a through hole. I want it to be a blind hole. So I'm going to have it go 0.125 diameter, and the depth, yeah, I want that to be about a half inch depth. So we'll leave it just like that. Hit the check mark. And voila, we have our big hole in the middle and we have our smaller hole on the edge there or you know, further out. Now the problem is we're supposed to have five of those smaller holes on the outside and we only have one. To the rescue comes their handy dandy circular pattern. Tap on circular pattern. Um, you'll notice there's a bunch of stuff to choose at the top we don't want to do a part pattern for this. A part pattern means literally I'm going to choose a whole part. So right now I've only created one part, this whole big um, you know, block thing. Uh, I don't want to pattern that part. I want to pattern a feature of that part. So I'm going to tap here and go to Feature Pattern. And now it asks me to select which feature I want to pattern, and that would be that hole right there. And the axis that I want to pattern this off of is the axis that goes straight through the middle of this object. Now, an axis, as you might think, is basically um, a line that goes you know, somewhere. Well, we don't really have a line drawn here. We don't have to. We actually can just choose this circle right here as our axis of pattern because it chooses the center of that circle. So it recognizes that the center of that circle is the axis. So awesome, makes it a lot easier. We want this pattern to be completely circular and we want five total holes and voila, there we go. 
Now, let's say we only wanted we wanted five holes, but we only wanted it on half the um, half of the circle. Then we would type in 180 degrees here, and now I have five holes within a half circle rotation. Obviously, that's not what we want, so I'll change that back to 360, and we are good to go. Opposite direction is not really going to change a whole lot, so that's nothing to worry about. Um, equal spacing is definitely what we wanted, and we're good. So we'll hit check mark, and man, that looks awesome. All right, so uh, if I were to get some statistics or some data on this um, object, if I'm the manufacturer, I kind of want to know uh, how much material I'm going to be spending to make this thing. So I'm going to go up here to the scales. I'm going to tap on the, is it going to let me tap on the object? Tap on the object, and I find that my volume is 1.665 cubic inches. Um, okay, whatever. That doesn't sound that unreasonable, right? Just like an inch cube, like, you know, less than two cubic inches. Not too bad. Um, but if you are a manufacturer, you want to minimize the amount of material you use as much as possible because you want to make things uh, less expensive if, as long as it can withstand the forces that you are putting on it. Well, one way to do that is to make it hollow on the bottom instead of making it solid all the way through. So to hollow this out in on shape, you're going to go to the 3D tools, and you'll notice that there's something called shell. I'm going to tap on shell. If I wanted this thing to be hollow but to keep the whole bottom, to, so to keep the bottom solid, bottom solid, then I would turn that like that, and then it would just hollow out the inside of this thing without um, any of the outside pieces going away. However, based on what we see in the pictures in activity 134, we actually want the bottom surface to be removed. So I'm going to select a face to remove, and that's going to be this bottom face right here. And you'll notice that it hollows it out a little bit for us. Now I say a little bit because you can tell it's kind of bumpy in there. There's you know, a lot of, looks like basically a lot of thickness to that shell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do 0 0.05 inch thickness instead. And that'll bump it out a little bit. Make, give it a little bit more room to... Um, uh, or, you know, space that's not being used. And it's perfect. All right, so that looks really, really good. I'm going to hit check mark. Now I have a hollowed out item. And what did that do for us? Well, let me go back here to the scale, check it out. 0.468 cubic inches. And if you think about that, we have 0.468 compared to 1.665. Uh, we're almost uh, four times smaller or four times less volume being used in this object than we had in the original one, which means I can make almost four times as many objects for the same price as I would with the other way. So that's a really awesome savings for our company and uh, actually makes it look kind of sleek too. Kind of cool stuff there. All right, I hope that was really helpful. That is the full thing. If you want to turn off that last plane, uh, where to go? Turn off that plane. That way you can just see the beauty of your object. That's awesome. And that's all I have for you.